get started lying on our back. So come to corpse pose. Get really, really comfortable here. Corpse pose is where we practice death so that we don't have such a fear of death. So you could place one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly in your corpse pose and just feel what's underneath your palms. Feeling solid, grounded, held by gravity. It's really settling into this space. You are a Shavasana. And begin to breathe. Our intention for the practice today is a vidya, which in Sanskrit means ignorance. So vidya translates to knowledge. So a vidya is the misunderstandings and misconceptions of our own realities. It is known to be the root cause of all suffering. So on your back, pull your right knee in, let your left knee stay grounded. And I'll demonstrate that you can always use verbal cues, auto, uh, auditory cues, kinesthetic cues, whatever you need for the practice. So pulling your right knee in, and then reach your right foot to the ceiling, sole of the foot really reaching up, ball of the foot reaching up, hands to the back of the leg, back of the thigh, hamstring, just begin to pull your leg in. Left hand can come to the left hip to really ground. So you're in a hamstring stretch. Your head, your shoulder, your neck, your jaw are all relaxing and letting go here. I'm gonna come close just so you can hear me again as I continue. But stay in on your back. And one more inhale. And then pull your knee back into your chest. Give it a nice squeeze, maybe a little circle, and then let it lay down next to your left leg and be heavy. And then pull your left knee in, close to your chest. Give it a nice squeeze, really compress it. Great for digestion. And then press your left foot to the sky. So right and left leg are long, right leg is heavy on the earth, left leg is reaching to the sky. And a Hindu sage named Ramana Maharshi says, remove the ego and avidya is gone. So in other words, remove the ego and ignorance is gone. Look for it, the ego vanishes and only the real self alone remains. So that's our intention for the practice. It's a little deep, so you take it wherever you want it to go or leave it. This is your practice as always. Take and leave the postures, the poses, follow your breath. So let's pull both knees into the chest. Give yourself a good squeeze, a nice hug, and then roll to the right side. Pause in the fetal position. And when you feel you have the strength to press yourself back up, come to Sukhasana, a comfortable seated posture, just crossing the legs, crisscross applesauce, root your tailbone down. Let your shoulders come up to the ears and then let them come back. Ease them down your back. Close the eyes. We're going to do a short meditation. It's called a Tonglin meditation. And it's an ancient Buddhist practice to awaken compassion. So with the eyes closed, just take a cleansing breath before we begin. The way it's going to work, and I'll guide you through it, is you'll inhale, and you take the pain and the suffering of others on the inhale, and on the exhale, you send out relief and ease and love. So just cleanse your breath. And again, you don't have to do this. You can just take a regular Ujjayi breath. We won't be here for too long and we'll get moving. So let's first round, inhale the suffering of the world. And exhale, ease. Second round, you're gonna inhale the suffering of your community or a specific community. And exhale, relief to that community. Third round, you're gonna pick an individual who really triggers you, bothers you, makes you feel uncomfortable, and you're gonna inhale their pain, their suffering, and let go of some lightness, send it to them. And now you're going to pick someone who you love and support, or who supports and loves you, and inhale their suffering, and exhale love to them. And the last round, we're gonna inhale and exhale peace and love and relief on both. So inhale, some light, some ease, and exhale, relief, peace, light, love. And then just let your breath turn to a more natural breath. 
your Ujjayi. Gently flutter open the eyes and make your way to standing at the top of your mat. Press play on the playlist if you're going to use it. It's in the chat box. And let's begin to move. So just kind of feel it out, shake it out, sway it out. You probably just woke up, so move the knees, move the arms. Notice where you need a little movement. Kind of let that go, let some energy go. And then pause in a standing Tadasana. Feel really grounded, press through your feet, lift all 10 toes, feel your whole legs engage, strong and sturdy. Stack your shoulders, hips and ankles. Let your ears float back a little bit further so that your neck is in alignment. And then inhale, reach the arms up and hook either your thumbs or grab onto opposite elbows and pull your arms away from each other. We're gonna do this move a lot in the practice so you can always choose and you can play with one or the others, definitely switching with the habit of which one goes in front. So whichever option, pull your arms away from you. And then side bend to the right. Inhale, lengthen the side body. Keep pressing through both heels. Inhale, center to the left. Stacking the shoulders still, pressing evenly through both feet. Inhale, rise. Exhale, bend the knees, forward fold. Let the knees bend a lot. Really generously bend them so that your whole torso is just hanging and that your torso can even connect and compress on the knees. Let the head go, let the neck go. Shake your head, yes, a solid firm yes. You're confident, your answer is yes. You know what you believe in, trust yourself, yes. And then a solid no, you have boundaries, you disagree, no, that's your value and you don't like that. And then a maybe, roll your head, your neck around, and I don't know, Honoring that your mind can change. And then you don't have to have all the answers. There's a lot of uncertainty. And then let that go. Inhale, half lift, lengthen the spine. Flatten the back. Exhale, forward fold. Plant the hands, step back to the first plank posture. So lift the thighs, press through the palms into the earth. Feel the heels rooting back behind you. Flex shoulders, elbows, and wrists. Full breath here. And then everybody knees, chest and chin lower, elbows stay close to the body. Untuck the toes, walk your hands wide, finger, spider fingers, and inhale, rise up to a wide arm cobra. Press the tops of your feet, the shin into the mat. Lift your chest forward, and then look over your right shoulder. Inhale, neck to center, look over the left shoulder. Exhale, slow, lower, but find length as you lower in the chest. Downward facing dog. Hips up and back, walk the dog, wag the tail. First down dog of this practice, probably your first of the day. Again, shake the head out, let it go, pressing into the palms. Continuing to breathe. Really spread through the fingers. And then find a more still downward facing dog. And slowly bend the knees, continuing to slowly bend them as you lower into table, but go slow, 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 landing in tabletop. Shins press, untuck the toes. Hands are pressing, spread them wide. And then inhale, belly release, look up or close the eyes. Cow pose and just stay, full round of breath. Always follow your own breath. If mine may move faster or slower, and then exhale, curl and round the spine for cat. Looking at the navel, again, eyes can be closed, pressing the tops of the feet into the mat. Tailbone is tucked, stay here. One more round, really slow. So inhale to a slow cow and just hold it, pause. And then exhale and hold your cat. Like a scared Halloween cat, arching the spine. And then your cat cow, maybe you like the slow, maybe you want to go faster, find some organic movement. Incorporating side cat cow, neck rolls, whatever you want. Two more breaths. So let's all meet back in a tabletop. And everybody walk your hands about one hand distance forward and shift your weight forward. So in other words, your knees are further back behind your hips now. We're going to stay in tabletop for the first round. Lift your 
right hand, just go into your spider fingers and notice your hips. See if you can even your hips back out. Now lift your whole right hand off the mat, maybe just hovering or maybe all the way up towards your shoulder, elbows bending. And see if you can even out the hips again, square them off. Lower your right hand, left hand, spider fingers. Notice the weight distribution, even it out. Left hand hovering or all the way lifted. And then lower it back down. You can stay here in tabletop or you can come up to plank and we're gonna do that again and we're gonna add on. So left hand is your base, right hand reaches up, and then bring it wide to the right like a wing, and then bring it to your head, and then bring it back behind you like airplane arms towards your hip. And then lower the right hand. Left hand lifts up to the left, to the back of your head, and reach it back behind you, palm facing down. And lower, one more, you've got it. You can always lower the knees, right hand lifts up, Wing, head, back to your hip, and lower, left arm, row it up, wing, head, hip, left hand plant. Everybody slowly shift the weight forward and lower as slow as you can, all the way to your belly, bending your elbows, keeping them close, slow, 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 slow. Exhale, release, untuck the toes, your back bend, maybe traditional cobra, Meet in dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, reach your right leg up. Bend the knee, open up the hip. Scorpion the dog, stack the hips, roll the ankle. Option to come onto your left forearm. Inhale, re-extend your right leg long and lower it alongside the left leg. Inhale, left leg lifts. Bend the knee, open up the hip. Scorpion dog. Maybe your right forearm comes down. Re-extend your left leg. Downward facing dog. Bend the knees, step or hop all the way through onto your feet, coming onto your back for some core. You got this. Ooh, we should have started the playlist. I don't know if I said that, but I think I did when we came to moving at the top of our mat. Sorry about that. Make sure it's going. You can pick a, a few songs in the middle. So coming on to core, just like we started, left leg long, right knee pulls in and reach it up. Interlace your hands behind your head, make a little basket, lift your shoulder blades off the mat, press into your foot, and then lift your left foot so it's hovering. So both left and right leg are off the earth. Tuck your tailbone so your lower back presses into the earth. And then left elbow to right thigh. Bring your elbow back to center and switch the legs slowly. Right leg is hovering just a couple inches off the earth. Left leg is pressing up to the sky. Right shoulder to left thigh. Lower your shoulder, but keep them off the mat. Switch the legs. It's a slow bicycle, so you can continue. I encourage you to go really slowly. Inhale, as you switch the legs, and exhale, as you crunch elbow towards thigh. Okay, you have five more breaths, and you can go super slow, or if you're eager to move a little faster, a little more cardio type work, instead of core, you can do that. Last three. Two and one, pull the knees into the chest. Give yourself a hug. And then knees stack on top of the hips like an upside down tabletop, flexing the feet again, pressing the soles, the heels of the feet away, soles of the feet away, palms to the thighs. Press your palms into your thighs and press your thighs back into the palms. Feel the lower back pressing into the earth. Keep your shoulder blades down, relax the jaw, figure eight, let it go. And keep pressing. You should already feel the core here. I know I do. Nice work. Keep breathing. An option to stay right here or keep pressing right hand to right leg. Extend your left arm alongside your ear and left leg long, hovering. And then inhale back to center. Left hand connects to left leg. Right arm reaches, left leg reaches. 
Inhale, center, press both palms, and then left and right arm, extend. Inhale, center, switch. One more at your own pace. Continuing to breathe. And exhale, pull knees to chest. Give yourself a squeeze, rock on your sacrum, and then rock and roll your way into a downward facing dog, however you wanna get there. Maybe through a vinyasa, maybe not. Meet back in downward facing dog. Full breath here. Nice work. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, shift forward to plank. Strong and steady, we've been here before, so have your alignment. Exhale, dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Two more, inhale, plank. Exhale, dog. Inhale, plank and pause. Lower your right forearm down, lower your left forearm down. You're on a low plank, forearm plank. Make sure your arms are parallel. Your elbows and your wrists are in alignment. Keep pulling your belly button towards your spine using your core here. Option to lower the knees. And now we're going to just shift the weight forward and back like a little saw. So coming onto your toes and then pressing your heels back. Shifting forward and back. Nice work. Use the breath. You are strong. And then exhale, pause. And everybody lower the hips down. Untuck the toes. Sphinx pose. So pull your heart, your chest through, broad and through the collarbone. Press the tops of your feet into the mat. And isometrically pull your arms back towards your body. Keep your forearms down. Come to table. So come onto your knees. Forearms stay down. Grab onto biceps and triceps, and then re-extend your arms. That's just to make sure that our elbows are not splaying out. Elbows should stay in line with the, um, with the wrists. If you need more support, we're going into dolphin. If you know you need more support, you can interlace the palms. So lift the chest like a cat. Tuck the toes, hips up and back. Downward facing dog in the legs. This pose is intense. We're gonna stay here. We're gonna do it again later in the class. So we'll have the option to invert and get fancy later. Walk your toes forward if you want a little more intensity. You can touch your toes together and just lift one leg for a round of breath and the other leg. And then let's all take two more breaths. Meeting in a child's pose as you're ready. So knees wide, toes kiss, forehead connects to the mat. See if you can bring your heels closer to the hips. One full breath here. And let it go. And then keep your left palm down. We're just going to reach our right hand up. And maybe it won't come very far off the earth at all, like maybe a millimeter or it's just the action, but it's a really great shoulder strengthener. So forehead stays down, left arm stays arm, and see if you can lift your right arm just up a tiny bit. And if you can, you can pulse it a little bit further off the mat. And lower that side down, up to the other side. Your palm can stay facing the earth or thumb can face up. Your choice, so left arm lifts, just let it hover. Maybe you pulse it. And then lower that back down. Downward facing dog. Option to take a vinyasa. We've done just one so far with knees, chest, chin. If you want to do chaturanga, shift the weight forward. Exhale, elbows just to 90 degrees. Roll it over the toes. Heart comes through for up dog. Where your thighs, shins off the mat. Downward. Facing dog. Everybody bend the knees, tiptoe or hop lightly, top of mat, half lift, let it go. Inhale, root to rise, mountain pose. Same action as before, hook the elbows or hold opposite. 
uh, out or hook the thumbs or hold elbows. Exhale, side bend to the left. Inhale, center to the right. Inhale, center, exhale, back bend, cactus arms. Inhale, arms lift and forward fold, hinge at the hips, let it go. Inhale, half lift. Exhale to release. Step it back, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg rises, knee towards nose, step forward between the hands, lower your back knee, low lunge, double up the mat if you need support. Inhale, arms rise, hook the arm, thumbs, or grab the elbows, framing the face. So these options are going to repeat. Remember to switch. Tuck the tailbone, pull the belly button into the core, pull your ribs cage in. Keep pulling your hips towards the midline so you don't have your hips swaying out. And then side bend to the right and hold. Feel that side stretch. Feel the left hip flexor stretch. Notice where you feel the stretch right now. Different for everybody. Inhale, center. Side bend to the left. Inhale, center. Exhale, hands. Plant, step back, plank. Option two, vinyasa, your flow. Or skip it and meet a downward facing dog. Moving mindfully if you choose the flow, cobra or up dog to down dog. Inhale, left leg reaches up. Bend the knee, pull it towards your core and step it through lightly. Right knee down, inhale, rise. Sink into the lunge, but pull the belly button back towards the, the spine. Hook the, R, the thumbs or the elbows. Side bend to the left. Inhale, center to the right. Feel the length in the torso. It's a side bend, not a back bend. Inhale, center, exhale, hands plant. Right foot steps forward to meet the left, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Step back, plank to dog or vinyasa. Inhale, right leg rises again. Knee towards nose, step it through for runner's lunge. So hands stay connected to the earth. Come onto little spider fingers like we've done before. Extend your left leg long, straightening the back left leg, lifting the thigh. And now feel the weight in the legs and see if you can just hover the fingertips so they're not even touching the earth. You may always walk your right foot more to the right for more space in the hips in your lunges. Now, if you are hovering, just like we did earlier, you're gonna row. So row both arms up, bending your elbows. And then extend your arms back to airplane. Reach your arms forward. Torso is in line with the back left leg and the arms. One long line of energy. And then exhale, hands come down to hover. Don't touch them. Roll your arms up towards your uh, shoulders. Extend your arms back for airplane. Sweep your arms forward. Exhale, hands plant, step back. Optional vinyasa, you can always do it with your right toes lifted. A one-legged plank. Your back bend, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg rises. Knee towards nose, step it through mindfully, lower it down. Come on to spider fingers. Set up your legs first, your foundation. And then hover your fingertips off the earth. You got it, you're strong. Use your core, use your legs. Roll your arms towards your shoulders. Extend your arms back, palms down, airplane arms. Sweep your arms forward and through alongside your ears. Exhale, lower them between the feet, framing the foot, hovering. Row your shoulders, extend your arms back for airplane. Sweep through, hold it here. 
Keep pressing the back heel away from you, straightening your right leg, lifting your right thigh, left knee directly over your left ankle, and lower the hands down, plant, step forward, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, rise to stand. Hook thumbs or elbows, side bend to the right. Inhale, center, side bend to the left. Inhale, center, exhale, back bend, cactus the arms. Inhale, rise. Exhale, forward fold. Step back, plank pose. Pause here. You can stay in plank, you can take tabletop. I'm gonna choose forearm plank, so lowering onto your forearms. And just lower your right knee. Let it gently tap the floor and re-extend it. Left knee, tap. So you're just kind of pedaling your knees. Tap your right knee, tap your left knee. And notice your hips, keep them sturdy. Right knee lowers, left knee lowers. Go at your pace. Get one more of each side. And then pause. Press back up to traditional plank. Exhale, vinyasa or dog. Two full rounds of breath in downward facing dog when you get there. Inhale fully. And exhale completely. Inhale fully. Exhale, let it go. We're moving into a standing pose series. Inhale, right leg rises, knee towards nose, step it through. Warrior two, left heel down, left arm back. Check that your right knee and ankle are in one line. Press through the left side foot of your left uh, leg. Lower the shoulders down the back. Feel your pinky fingers moving further behind you and pull your belly button to your core, your rib cage in. This is your warrior two, feel strong. Straighten your front leg. Reach forward and down for triangle. You might want to walk your back foot in. Take your time as we take these postures for the first time to set up the alignment. So roll your left shoulder back, stack knee shoulders, roll your left hip back. Relax your head and neck or choose where you want your gaze, your drishti to go. That's your focus point. So maybe it feels right to look at the ceiling or your hand. For me, it feels better to just relax my neck. Staying in triangle or moving to half moon, bend your front knee, left hand to left hip, shift the weight forward. See if you can get there, maybe hovering your right fingers. So if you have your left hand to left hip, you can reach your left arm to the sky. Bring your left heel further behind you and lift it higher. Hovering your right fingers off the earth, another balance and core challenge. One more inhale. We're all gonna meet up in warrior two, so gently get there. Step it back, warrior two. Arms rise, thumbs or elbows hook. Inhale, reverse with the hook of the arms, so side bend to the left. Again, side bend, not back bend. Keep bending into your front knee. Get low in the lunge, because you can. Inhale, back to center and move to the right. Variation of side angle. Keep rolling your left shoulder back. Inhale, rise back up. Your warrior two, release the arms, hands to hips, untuck that back foot. You're coming into a crescent high lunge. So your toes are both facing forward. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, airplane arms, torso forward. Inhale, we're moving into warrior three. So press off your left foot, come to flying on your right foot. Lift your left heel a little higher. An option to stay and hold this pose. Option to reach your arms forward, the full pose, or bend your front knee and land back 
in high lunge and stay here. Or the option for dynamic movement. So I'm gonna sweep my arms back and lift off to warrior three. Exhale, lower, high lunge. Airplane the arms, press into warrior three. So you have plenty of options, it's your practice. So what feels appropriate today? Maybe you wanna stay in one posture, let it marinate, or maybe you want to keep moving and work your legs. You're working your legs no matter what you do, really, so. One more, wherever you are, let's all meet back in crescent lunge, high lunge, and then exhale, low lunge, left knee comes down. Lower your hands on the inside of the right foot, heel to your foot to the right. Again, double up the mat if you need support. Untuck your back toe. Reach your right arm up, left hand down. Easy twisting lunge. Option is stay right here or bend your left knee and reach back. If you have a strap, you can always use that. If it's accessible to you, you can grab your foot or your ankle for the quad stretch. Exhale, slowly release. Step it back. Three-legged dog, shake it out. Inhale, three-legged plank. Optional vinyasa. Nice way to wash it out between sides. You know child's pose is always available to you. Own your practice. Inhale, left leg rises. Knee to nose, warrior two. Open up wide with the arms. Press through the back side of the right foot. Check that your left knee and ankle are in alignment. Get a little lower in the lunge. Widen your stance if you can. Imagine you're pressing against something with your hand. There's resistance. Now everybody hands to the hips. Just notice if one hip is higher than the other. Sometimes it helps to straighten out your leg and even out the hips. We're gonna stay in warrior two for two more breaths. And then straighten the front leg. Moving to Trikonasana, triangle, reach forward and down with that length. Left hand can be on a block, a water bottle, or left shin or the floor. Roll your shoulder blade back. Keep tucking your uh, tailbone. Right hand to right hip, option to lie into your half moon. It's actually a half moon tomorrow. Floating on your left fingertips, reaching your right hand closer to the sky to feel that hovering motion. You can always practice this pose against a wall to get your hips in alignment. And then bend your front knee, slow to lower, warrior two. Inhale, arms rise. Frame the face or hook the arms. Exhale, variation of reverse warrior. Inhale, back to center with the torso. Exhale, variation of side angle. Working with core stability, working the legs, you got it. And then inhale, center. Hands to the hips. Start to rotate the hips to forward. Both feet face forward, crescent lunge, arms rise. Exhale, airplane arms, reach the torso forward. Keep drawing your hips towards each other and then look towards your left foot, it's your base. Look a little in front of you and shift your weight into warrior three. Again, you can stay here. Keep rolling your right hip down, left hip up. Maybe use your hands on your hips to even them out. If you're staying here, good for you. I'm gonna flow. So I'm gonna step my back foot back. Warrior three is a tough pose and it's not my favorite. And then sweep your arms forward. Airplane and shift, launch off, warrior three. 
It's a beautiful pose with an intense meaning behind it. Exhale, step back, crescent lunge. So you take whatever movement you want. If you want to stay in crescent lunge and take a variation, maybe interlacing the palms. We have another round of breath to all meet back. As you're ready, no hurry, coming back to high lunge. And then exhale, lower your right knee down, low lunge. Plant the hands inside the left foot, heel to your left foot to the left, maybe even off the mat. Right hand stays down, left arm reaches up. Gentle spinal twist. Option to reach your left arm back. Option to bend your back knee. Make sure it's supported if you need a blanket under it. Maybe the quad stretch. Pull your belly button to your spine, even here. Don't let it splay out. Pull your rib cage in. Breathe. Exhale, release gently. Step your left foot all the way back. Three legged dog, shake it out. Option, shift forward. Three legged plank, chaturanga, vinyasa, knee, chest, chin. Meet up in downward facing dog. From down dog, bend the knees, slowly lower to table. Move slow, move slow, move slow. Hover your shin, hover your knees. Land in tabletop. Keep your toes tucked and sit back on your heels. We're going to do some wrist stretches before we do another standing series. So this is pretty intense. If you need to come out and untuck the toes, go ahead and do that. But it's a great, great stretch for your ankles and your feet, which do so much work for us. So everybody press your palms away from you, fingertips facing up, shoulder blades down the back. Relax the face. And then fold your thumb in, in one finger at a time. Index, middle, ring, pinky, make a fist. Ball up the hands, fist moves down to the earth. Feel that for our texting and typing wrists and arms and fingers. And then shake it out. And this time, palms face forward, thumbs face up, relax the shoulder blades again. Same action. So thumb folds in, index, middle, ring, and pinky. Mindfully squeeze the fist and move the fist away from you, kind of like you're pouring some pictures of something, whether it be lemonade, kombucha, coffee, wine, whatever you like. Okay, shake it out. Last one, last variation, arms to the sky. And then flashing lights. So make a big fist, ball up your fingers, relax the face, relax the jaw, and open. Fist and open. Now let's move faster. See how tight you can squeeze and how wide you can open. Really working those fingers. Keep going faster. You got it. Four, three. Two, one, shake it out. Okay, tabletop, shake out your feet, shake out your arms. Bring it out, make some noise. Hopefully not waking up too many people in your household. All right, tabletop. And then lower your forearms down. We're coming into our second round of dolphin, where you can choose to take an inversion if you like forearm stand, or you can choose a fun uh, pose that we're gonna try together. So hands, to your biceps and then lay them back down parallel. Tuck your toes under, cat in the back. Exhale, hips up and back. Dolphin pose. So option to come into dorsal fin, which is a pretty challenging pose. I probably won't get the balance, but I'll show you what it looks like and will look funny to watch me fall out of it. So walk your feet kind of a little bit wider and you're gonna lift your one leg first. So I'm gonna go with my left leg. I lift it up, I bend and I open it like scorpion dog. Now I'm going to come on to spider fingers in my right hand. Maybe my right hand hovers. Maybe it comes to my shoulder or to the side or to my head or then all the way back like we've been practicing. I reach it back, airplane arms, and grab my foot or my ankle. Dorsal fin. And then exhale. Release. Second side is always easier, right? 
No, no, it's okay. So right leg left rises, bend the knee, open the hip, scorpion dog. If you fall out, that's part of the practice. It's a super silly pose. Okay, left le uh, fingertip spider hover. Reach back. I might have to get silent. It's hard to talk through this one. And then you pick your foot into your hand and your hand into your foot. Like we do that opposite energy in a lot of postures. All right, dolphin pose. Let's take two more breaths. Again, you're welcome to lift one leg or invert. One more breath. And let's all lower the knees, puppy pose, variation of child, hips stay lifted over the knees and reach your arms forward, forehead to the mat or chin to the mat for puppy posture. If you prefer child, go there. You have two full rounds of breath. Because I love Rumi, I'm gonna share a quote from Rumi that connects to our intention for today. Do you make regular visits to yourself? So he asks a good question, and I think right now you've all chosen to visit yourself in this yoga practice and kind of turn inside and process through physical postures, process through meditation. So honor that, that choice that you made. One more breath. Make your way to downward facing dog. Look towards your hands, bend the knees, step or hop quietly forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, let it go. Root to rise, inhale, stand up. Exhale, release. So cross your right foot over your left. Find length and then forward fold. It's an IT band stretch, a little different than a traditional forward fold. If you want a little more, you can walk your hands to the left. Getting a little deeper. And if your hands don't touch the ground, you always just bend your knees or use whatever props you have available. But your hands can be on your shins, of course. Make the pose work for you. Don't, don't force the pose. That's why we have props. And that's why we keep practicing. Okay, roll it up, release it out, shake it out. Inhale, arms rise, second side. So cross left in front of right, fold forward. And you may notice one side is tighter or more flexible, that's okay. Walk your hand further to the right for a little deeper. And then release, slow roll all the way up. Inhale, arms rise. Hook the thumbs or frame the face, grabbing the elbows, make sure you're switching it up. Side bend to the left. This time release the arms and lift your right leg. You're in a one-legged star. See how far you can go without falling. And then inhale back to center. Switch the grip. Move to the right, release the arms, framing your face like a Y for YMCA or YWCA, whatever. Lift your left leg, loading one-legged star, and then land Tadasana. Exhale, chair pose, sink down. Check if you can see your toes together. Tuck your tailbone, lift your chest, reach your arms alongside your ears, and then exhale, arms back, airplane. Lift to your toes. So hover on your heels. Keep your heels lifted and see if you can come to stand, arms up to Tadasana. Oh yeah, feel your calves burning. Exhale, heels down. One more, sink it down, chair pose. Exhale, arms back. Lift the heels. Hover on your toes, work your ankles. Inhale, arms sweep up. Come to stand and lower, forward, fold. Bend the knees a lot. 
Bring your fingers, palms up under your feet, gorilla pose. So you're standing on your palms. Toes tickle your wrists. Relax the head, relax the neck. Let it go. And then release the hands. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands. Make your way to dog. Always the option to flow. From downward facing dog, inhale, right leg rises. Knee to nose, warrior two. Reach open, get wide, shoulder blades down the back. Inhale, arms rise, start pose, heels in, toes out, shake your hips around. Exhale, palms press, goddess or horse pose, get low, tuck your tailbone. See if you can move your thighs further back behind you and stack your shoulders over your hips. Relax your head, relax your neck. Reach your arms wide and then reach to the right, back to center. To the left, back to center. A couple more times. Fill your obliques. Like you're reaching something, back to center. Reach, center, one more. Reach, center, reach, center. Arms up, hook the thumbs, hook the elbows, side bend to the right. Center, side bend to the left. You got it, stay strong. Center, exhale, hands to the hips. Straighten the legs, parallel the feet. Wide leg, forward fold, hinge, slowly lower. Relax the head. You can go even wider if you'd like. You can take an inversion if you'd like. We're gonna do this a second time, but we're not gonna have um, as much time for an inversion because I wanna get a hip stretch in. So legs wide. You can walk your hands forward like a down dog in the arms. You can walk your hands back. Keep shifting the weight into your toes, off the heels, so that your hips are over your ankles. We have about three more breaths. So if you chose to invert, come back down. If you want to take a skandhasana, you can bend your left knee and reach your right toes to the sky. One breath on each side. And then walk your fingers through center to the other side, left toes to the sky. Maybe your right heel is planted or maybe it's lifted. It just depends on your body. Maybe you can float and hover. And then make your way back. Wide leg stance. Inhale, rise slowly, star. Exhale, turn your right toes, warrior two. Cartwheel your left and your right hand down. Step it back, vinyasa or dog. Inhale, left leg rises, knee to nose, step forward, warrior two. We've been here and we've held this pose so we're not here long. Inhale, star. Heels in and toes out. Exhale, squat, get a little lower this time. And then everybody lower your torso, bring your hands down, walk your feet back. We're gonna bring our knees down, we're coming into frog. So I'm gonna turn to face you. We're starting to warm down the body. So knees and ankles are in line, they're parallel. And you can stay right here on your hands. You can use a block under your belly, you can use a blanket. You can start to walk to forearms or all the way, laying the chest down. It's a pretty intense posture, so please do not strain yourself. There should be no pain, maybe it's not comfortable, but we're gonna stay here for two full breaths because we are all still gonna do pigeon. Exhale, let it go. And then inhale, press yourself back up. Press into your hands, wide-legged forward. Wide-legged forward fold, inhale, roll up. Exhale, warrior two, cartwheel the hands down. Final flow or skip it. 
down dog. Inhale, right leg rises. Open it up, scorpion the dog. Make some circles in your hips and with that space, half pigeon. You can always do pigeon on the back if you prefer. So right knee to right wrist, right ankle towards the left side of the mat. It does not have to be parallel. Walk your left toes back. Look back behind you and straighten your left leg. Then lift the chest. You can always put a blanket or something under your right thigh. Exhale, find the length, and then maybe you fold into sleeping pigeon. Pigeon on the back is just a figure four. Stay in flipping pigeon or walk yourself up. Option to bend your left knee and reach around with opposite arm, same arm, both arms for a quad stretch. Keep pulling your belly button in, don't let it splay out your rib cage in. Option to hook your left elbow coming into mermaid. Two more breaths, whatever variation you're in. And exhale, let that side go. Shake it out, three-legged dog. Lower it down, left leg rises, knee, to no knee opens up, scorpion the dog. Make some circles first, and then left knee towards left wrist, or head into opposite side of pigeon on the back. We're coming to Sleeping pigeon, walk your right foot further back. Untuck the toes, square off the hips. Maybe you put something under your left sit bone, lengthen and then lower. Maybe forearms, maybe you use your props as a little pillow, something for your forehead to connect to like a water bottle or a pillow or just your fist. We'll then stay in Slipping Pigeon or come all the way to rise, bending your back knee. Option for that quad stretch. Maybe you want it to be more of a spinal twist. So opposite arm, two leg. Or maybe you want to try mermaid. Exhale to release, step back, down dog. Bend the knees, look towards your hands, step or hop all the way through onto your seat. Bring your heels to the earth, feet long, move your sit bones around, create some space. And then walk your right foot or just cross your right ankle over left thigh. Reach your arms up and exhale, begin to fold with a flat back. So just like we did from standing, a variation of a forward fold for the IT dance stretch. If you prefer a traditional forward fold without crossing the legs, you can always take that. So if you're coming into this, you can stay here or walk your hands a little further to the left. And then inhale, rise up, shake it out, other side. Left foot crosses over, lengthen the spine. You don't have to touch your toes or even your ankles or your shin. Lengthen the chest, maybe walk your hands to the right. And then inhale, rise back up. Slowly roll all the way down. Pull right knee into the chest, just where we started. Extend your right leg to the sky. We won't be here long, but see if you can go a little deeper than when you started in our first corpse pose, our first Shavasana. Does your hamstring feel more open? Just observe. And then bend your right knee in again. Give it a squeeze, half happy baby. Grab onto the outside edge of your right foot. 
Use your left hand to anchor your left hip down. Press your foot into your hand and into your foot. Your left knee is coming towards your armpit. And then cross your right leg over to the left side for a spinal twist. If you prefer to stack your left knee under your right, you can bend both knees. Let your right ear fall to the right, close the eyes. Right arm can be extended out long or in a cactus or reach it up alongside the ear. Different variations give a different spinal twist or side body stretch. One more breath. And then inhale, return to center. Extend your right leg long alongside the left. Left knee, pull it in towards your chest. Compress, and then extend your left leg long. Hands interlace behind your left leg. Press your foot to the sky and keep pulling it back, pulling it towards your body. Bend your left knee, give it a squeeze. Half happy baby. Right hand coaxes the right hip down. Left hand is on the sole of the foot or holding the ankle, whatever is acceptable to your body. And then moving into the spinal twist. So left uh, leg goes into the right hand. Use your right hand to guide your left hand to the right. Let your left arm come to the left, left ear to the left. Last breath, exhale, slowly exit, rolling back onto your left. Pull your knees in, give yourself a squeeze. From here, you can take any last posture or head right into final lasting pose. So you can give yourself a squeeze and then extend long into stillness. If you feel like you need a little back bend, a bridge, a wheel, a plow, you feel like there's one more thing or core, whatever it is, I encourage you to just take seven or eight rounds of breath and then make your way to that final resting pose, Shavasana, so that you can have a few full minutes there to integrate all the work you've done. This is the most important pose of the entire practice, so you can reap all of the benefits of the last 57 or so minutes that you committed to. So if you're coming into Shavasana, get heavy. You can always place one hand to heart, one hand to belly. You can always extend your arms wide and face up, open to receive those benefits. You're safe here. There's nothing left to do. You've done all the work. So just let go and be in silence for a few breaths. I'll let you know when it's time to come out. As we always end together as a community with a final quote and breath.
slowly begin to lengthen the breath. Tenderly finding small movements in the extremities. And taking as much time as you need. Just slowly pull the knees to the chest. Give yourself a hug. Thank your body, be grateful for your breath. And then roll to one side, fetal position, symbolizing rebirth. You've restored and refreshed your body and your mind. As you feel ready, use the strength of your hands to press yourself up, eventually returning to a comfortable seat to close the practice together. If you're always trying to be normal, you will never know how amazing you can be, Maya Angelou. So from a comfortable seat, let's all bring our hands to heart center. If that feels, that resonates for you. And exhale, let it go. Full round of breath, inhale. And exhale. One more, just like that, bigger and better. Inhale. Let it go. Thank you for your practice.